Fame is crazy. You love it. And you hate it. Me, I mostly love it. But even I can say it done turned me into a monster who lies about every theme. I became addicted to the attention and when it goes away, I do what I need to do to get at it back. But I wasn't always this bad. This is my story of becoming Andrew Caldwell. Good morning. Good morning. Coming to you guys live right now. Talking about love. Love. How could we love one another? We're bearing, we're lying, we're cheating, we're murdering, we backstabbing. How could we love one another? I'm gonna give you guys some prior examples today. How could we love one another? <clears throat> Had a dream last night about Bishop Ed Lona. I had a dream on last night about Bishop Eddie Long. How could we love one another? Very emotion this morning. Everything always gotta be about me. By the way, people said this not a man off it, but this is a man off it, right? Right? Uh, thinking about the dream that I had, I'm gonna be able to speak to someone. If I never spoke to you before, on this morning, I am going to speak into lives, speak into your heart, speak into your soul. I'm going to be able to speak into your guts, into your guts can't take it no more. Because today is a new day. Had a dream on last night about Bishop Eddie Long. I'm about to, like I said, I'm about to get ready to speak into lives, speak into your heart, speak into your soul, speak into your guts can't take it no more. Hallelujah. Once again, what what are the love? What love are you giving to others? Obviously, I didn't plan what I was gonna say. Just hopped online and tried to figure out a way to capitalize on Eddie Long's cancer announcement. That's why I keep repeating myself. Also, I was waiting for more people to join. What love are you giving to others? Are you hurting them? Are you saying I love you and you know inside, deep inside, you hate that person? Well, today I'm gonna speak into your life. Had a dream about Bishop Eddie Long last night. When God, God had put, when we, he said he knew us before we was in our mother's womb. God put an assignment on us. We don't know what God, we don't know what type of assignment it is. All we know, we get up at 5 a.m., we get up every morning to work, we get up going to church on Sundays, we follow there how we was raised. But not knowing that we was on an assignment, that we are on assignment. I come here to speak life into you. I come here to speak abundantly to let you guys know there is still life. There is still hope. There is still love out there. You might have been church hurt, church hurt. But I come here to speak life right now. So I had a dream about Bishop Eddie Long last night that God told me he, he, it was dark. Bishop was standing at church. I don't know him, never met him in life. I always wanted to meet him, but I never met him. But I come here to speak life into him. He was at the pulpit. He had on a white jacket and his collar was black, it was leather. He was holding the mic and it was thousands of people in the sanctuary, thousands. I'm talking about it was so many people that they had to shut down the whole city. Let me listen. I'm not sweating. I actually just got up, just got out the shower and stuff. I'm like, let me hear it because I want to keep my word. I said I was going to be um, 30 minutes online, so I wanted to keep my promise to you guys. New person, new change, new life. But anyway, it was thousands of people that day. I saw what he had on. I saw what he, I'm not speaking deaf, but I saw what he had on. He was, he was standing up. And the Lord said, watch how you talk to my people. The Lord was telling me, he said, tell Andrew, tell my people, keep your mouths off my people. Keep your mouths off God anointed people. No matter how many members you got in your church, it's still God's house. No matter if you're a pastor, no matter what titles you are, you are still God's children. He, God, he, he said, Andrew, keep my, keep, he said, Andrew, tell my people to keep their mouths off my anointed people. You keep on your mouths anointed people, you will, yeah, you, you will fall, he said, this is what he told me to tell you. You've been hell before I let my anointed people fall short. That's what he said. And my, my, thing, my, my thing was, what is love? I'm sorry, what the hell was that story? 
I had a dream that Eddie Long was in the pulpit in a leather jacket in front of thousands. And God told me to tell my people to not put day mouths on my people. What? Where, do we still have love in the church? Do we still have love in our homes? Where is love? And the Lord spoke to me and said, he spoke to me and said, he spoke to me and said this. You might have lost somebody this week. You might have lost somebody in the past. But we've been doing by night, but joy comes in the morning. He did say that. But I'm going to give you a revelation. Every person that in our lives that are passing through, they are all, they are all, right now, they are all. And if they're all gone, if they're all gone, their assignment was up. God put an assignment upon our lives. I come here to speak life in Bishop, at Bishop Eddie Long. I, de I, yeah, I, I decree that your body to be healed. I decree that you finish God's assignment. I decree that souls might be saved. I decree that your ministry might be filled with the Holy Ghost. I decree before you leave this earth that your body be healed. That your body be, be, be bring back unto the subject. Uh, bring back. <laughs> In Jesus' name. Come on, everybody. This decree and declare. Come on. You might think it's a joke. You might think that this is fake. You might think what is going on. But the Lord spoke to me. He said it, he said it is his word. It is his word. That our bodies might be healed. And I speak life. He already spoke life into his body, I'm sure. But I speak life because I'm on God's assignment right now. I'm, I'm doing his assignment. He told me to speak life. He told me, he told me to speak peace, speak love. And that's what I want to do. Right now, this is my assignment. So I'm, I'm doing what he told me to do. Andrew, come I'm on. Let's talk the topic today. What I'm talking about. How do I come out from amongst them? Well, if you are hanging around different people. And you know you should not be hanging around. If you're hanging around somebody that's in their lifestyle, you know you should not be hanging around. Cut off your phone. Change your number. Don't go to the club that you used to go to. Go to a, the, go to the church house. That's the club. If you're drinking wine, you keep drinking wine and beer and it, 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 liquor and whiskey every day. You know your, your kidneys and organs have been shut down. You know the doctor told you to stop drinking. You know God told you to stop drinking. Drink some, change it around and drink some apple juice. That's why they say come out from amongst them. You can't, you can't be hanging around the type of people. It's contagious. It's contagious. It's contagious. That's why they say come out from amongst them and be separate, say the Lord. Where is love? Well, I want to speak love right now. My, it's, it's things getting me to saying, you know, I, I visit some churches. And you know it's probably only about one or two homosexuals in the church. You should not, you can preach about different sin. But you know you only have one or two. You don't have to preach about the whole message now. You don't have to preach about it. Pull that person kindly to the office. Now, don't forget about, don't, because us, us saints, we forget about that we was in sin. We forget about what we was. We forget about what we done. And then we like to put it all on that person. And that person feel like that person is dirty, nasty. Because that's how I used to felt. Don't have hope. But I come here to let you guys know there is still hope, there is still love. So, because we get... Oh, I see I'm positive today. Let's see how long that lasts. We forget about we was in sin. Uh -huh. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We can preach about it and bring that person. Yeah, I think you, you're a homosexual. Come out from amongst them. Lucy, I'm like, no. You come to that person kindly. You, 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 you bring the scripture. Because don't forget now, you was in sin too. Somebody brought you out of darkness too. Don't forget now. We get so caught up in them titles. We get so caught up with fame and get so caught up in different things. But yeah, I decree that Sophie's not going to piss the hell this year. But I, I'm saying something. I'm saying something. I'm saying something. There is too much hate on Facebook. There's too much hate in the church, in the homes. You go, you go into so many people's homes. The house is so hot. The house is steaming. And when you want to run about of that house, because that's how so much hate they're in. So much sin. You can look at a person and see if that person, let me tell you something. If you have the gift of discernment, you can look at a person and tell they are in the spiritual right. You can look at a person and tell they're living safe. You can look at a person and tell that person mind is right. That's why you have to judge the fruit by the spirit. Okay? So stop going into these churches. And you don't, you, one little word get to you. Stay there. Listen to the whole word before you leave. And stop going church to church. God is not a hopper. He does not hop, hop, hop. He's not going to play high, go and see. I see you. You see me. I see you. God, I need you. I need this. You, you, might, you might miss love. You might have been in a relationship years ago. And somebody hurt your heart. And still, you don't have nobody. I feel emotions. I don't know why. <laughs> Probably because I'm still lonely. Don't feel bad, y'all. It's my own dang on fault. I've never been hurt. I've never been in a relationship. Because all the relationships that I've been in, God did not approve them relationships because it was not in, it was not in the Bible. It was not that God, God did not command me and men to be together, women and women to be together. But I'm saying something now. I'm saying this. You might have been in a relationship. You might have been hurt. God said, move on. You're like, well, Andrew, I'm too busy. I work every day. I love my family too much. It is not, it is not good for a man to be alone. It is not good for a, a, a woman to be alone. God said there is still love out there in the world. There is still hope in the world. He said that if you want to be loved, it's out there. You don't got to go searching and find. Let that man come to you. And woman, women, if that man come to you, don't turn him out because his breath stink. Don't turn him out because his teeth missing. Bitch, what? It's okay to find someone you want to invest in, but it's also okay if you are one of those people that want their potential mate to already have good oral hygiene. Brush his teeth later, happen to brush his teeth later. 
Go and get him a little filler in his teeth, in his tooth, a new tooth. Don't, 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 don't bring down love because God sent people in our lives for a reason. You might be down on some bills since that person got money. You're like, well, don't use it because of his money. Use it because of his love. Because people like that hurt other people. And then before you know it, they go into suicide and they kill themselves. People, it's happening all across the world. We have to watch and pray. We have the president, Donald Trump. One side, he's racist. One side, he's black and easy. What? Trying to be black and trying to be, he trying to love people. And then another side, us spiritual people, we see through you, Donald. We know all what you are. But I come here to let you know, you are not going to take on nobody's households. You are not going to mess up our incomes. And you better send us back our tax forms. Give us back our taxes. Give us back our taxes. Our taxes come on time. I need my taxes. I don't, uh, I don't know how much it's going to be. <laughs> but I need my taxes. And I decree that I, I say, Lord, before Barack President, and it hurts my heart to see President Barack Obama leave the White House. Never met him in life. Wish I could. Never got a letter back because I never wrote the White House. Did I just say I never got a letter back because I never wrote him? <laughs> <laughs> but I believe that Barack Obama, President Barack Obama is still praying for us. I believe God, God showed me this. He might have left that White House, but I promise you, he didn't leave. He's not leaving. He gonna watch everything that Donald do. He go, he go catch everything that Donald trying to do. He gonna do everything to set, he, 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 gonna, he can't set him down now because he's the president for four years. But I promise you, I promise you, I promise you, Barack Obama has not left the White House. He's gonna be there for four years. This is what happens when you're pushed through school. Four years, watch and see. I ask God to heal your heart, your mind, your soul, your guts, and I snatch you from the pits of hell. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Because God is saying, it's Donald, Donald, Trump, Donald Trump might be president, but Barack Obama will be there for four years because Donald Trump is watching everything. He ain't leaving that White House. He got, he got, he got secret keys that you might not even know. Hey, it's a God saying, oh. your mind might not be right. You might be heard right now, but I'm asking you to ask God for forgiveness. Somebody is saying, Andrew, I have a church. I'm still getting up going to Bible class. I'm still getting up doing everything. What are my members? And the Lord spoke to me, and I'm going to get off it right now. The Lord said, I can see you members now. Are you going to accept them? Are you going out door to door? Are you doing revivals? Are you going door to door? Are you going out fishing for souls? That means grabbing them. Getting them out the house. You might not say, like, Andrew, I'm on a low income. I don't have a van. You better, you better tie them on a rope and you follow by the line. Bring them to bring them to God. Bring them to the house. It's not about the money. It's not about the first seat. It's not about the first. And pastors, before I get off, I've been saying this a lot. Now, your first your first lady is your side meat. What? She's your helper. She's everything. But I come to let you guys know right now. Stop letting these first ladies taking over your church. Stop letting them control your members. Stop letting them talk about your members. Stop letting them always put together programs, always doing this. What are you doing? Are you just sitting back and saying, praise God, praise God, hallelujah. There goes the negative. I was waiting on it. I, I, I decree that your church might be right. I decree that your church might be saved. I decree that your first lady may be set down and become a first lady that she's supposed to be and to help the women and curse the women not to control your church. Is she going to be a first lady? She's not going to be an undercover um, pastor. She's going to be going ahead and say, I want to be a pastor. And I'm not talking about nobody. I'm just saying, I'm saying this a lot. Stop it. Stop it. The church is for you. If she been called a preach, let her preach, get her life in. She don't gotta keep doing revivals to say she's a preacher. Now, me, I like women in the poor pit. I like men in the poor pit, okay? So, I've been hearing that a lot of people saying, I don't like women in the poor pit. Shut up, this guy's house. Now, good good morning, and wait, and don't forget. Yes, I'm great, and also too. And you're like, Andrew, what is he doing? I like to go top it off the top top it, that whatever comes to my mind. Because I already met, I already meditated before I came on here what I was going to talk about. So please don't say, oh, he always going subject to subject. I can't even understand. Well, maybe some of the stuff you don't even understand. Okay. But anyway, yes, uh, do I agree with that? You don't have to, Dan. Keep it moving. Praise your Lord. Miss <clears throat> Pamela, thank you for all those encouragement subject words. Mm, leave that first lady alone, Andrew. Talk on that men's department. Yes. Talk about the men's department. The men's department. I'm taking off for you. You're trying to get me off subject. We both be grateful. But I'm, I'm talking about different subjects too. And deacons. And past pastors, when you go into a church, your household might be said, come to the house of the Lord. Your church should be already in order. Church is not supposed to be about who I'm going to sleep with, what deacon, what pastor, what bishop, what minister I'm going to sleep with. Ministers! Stop wearing them tight pants. Stop wearing them big old shoes that's pointing all the way. You do hit somebody, they're going to believe. Okay, that was funny. Stop wearing them tight shirts that all you can see is your flesh. Stop, put on a suit. Make it loose. Stop going to the teller and telling them to cut it and the teller telling you there is no more to cut. Stop it. Yeah, you're right. I'm getting to the men's department before I get off here. And stop all putting all that color and stuff in your heart, man. You be coming to look like a little first lady. Um. Tight pants. 
point shoes are so pointed. If you hit, if you touch somebody, you begin to, they'll begin to bleed. And the teller saying, sir, DeAndre, I can't cut your pants anymore. It's, it's no more to cut. And you saying, yes, it is. I got to work. It's on Sunday. Stop arguing with the teller. I just had a whole conversation between the made up pastor and the made up teller. And yes, that's teller, not Taylor. Taylor, whatever she is. And this is just, I'm not talking about me. I'm saying others what I've been seeing and hearing and stuff. Pants are so, I'm not watching you guys because I really don't care. But when you come to guys' house, I do care because first of all, that's not a fashion form. That's not for you come and have sex. It's not fun when you come and gossip. That's not, that's a, that's a hospital. That's a hospital. You keep your, you keep your nasty stuff, you keep your nasty stuff at home until you're ready to be delivered. And you come to the altar and ask Lord for the forgiveness. Okay? Let's keep your nasty stuff at home. Stop going to churches and ruin other people's churches. Stop going and trying to destroy other people's lives because your life is miserable. Stop going because you have so much sin on you. You're not ready to you're not ready to be snatched. You're not ready to be snatched. But you're putting all in on other people trying to lay hands and think you're saved. Every time the music comes home, you're up there dancing. Another self-read. That is that, I tell you guys, people, it, it's not a club. You might be, oh, 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 but it's not a club. That's God's house. That's a hospital. That's what souls want to be saved. That's what people want to be spiritual help. There's ones that people have been begging and asking God, asking God to do things in life. And you want to sit here and want some tights. And you want to sit here and want to skirt all the way when you shout. You got to hold on to the church. The Holy Ghost doesn't work like that, my darling. He doesn't work when you shout. Your arms, your arms are open. Whatever God leads you to do. Every time I turn around, I see somebody holding the church shouting and holding something so they won't fall. Lose him. That's not how the Holy Ghost works. And, 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 and it's saying like everybody got the Holy Ghost now too. The kids. The Holy Ghost. You truly want the Holy Ghost? I'm just a hater. Remember when this kid was pulling too much focus, so I had to act a fool. I don't have to lick or suck or hump or bottom. Lick or suck or hump or bottom. Next time you have your Bible class, my pastors, teach your, don't, you, don't teach them how to shout now, but teach them what the meaning is of the Holy Ghost. Teach them how to get the Holy Ghost. And it's not all about speaking in tongues. Every time I go into these um, small churches and some of the other churches, and they all speak in the same tongues, the devil is a lie. Loose them, loose them spirits. How can you be in a home? How can you be in a home of a spirit, a lying spirit, a homosexual spirit, and you got your nurse to speak in tongue? Sit yourself down and get to the altar and ask God for forgiveness. Stop playing in God's house. For you might be for you might be laying in front of the house with nice flowers around you. Huh? Again, another self-read. I'm not saying you wanna die, but I'm just saying, don't you touch God's anointed people. Don't you mess with God's anointed house. People are begging for to be delivered. People are people are want people want so much, so much. You got people I heard that fast for days. People I heard that be fasting, seeking God. And you got your nerves to come here in, the, in God's house, do all that mess. Wow. Where is love? Where is love? Everybody want to sing. Everybody want to go in a choir stand. Everybody want to preach. Because you say, oh, the Lord spoke to me. I got to get a word. I got to preach now. I need my minister license. I need to go ahead and get a poor pit bishop. Please ordain. If you don't ordain, I'm leaving your church. I'm going to get my license somewhere else. And then when you get your license, you go start a church and it's only you and your, and your, your daughter and your, and your wife. Lose him. Lose him. <laughs> I rebuke you. That's God's house. Stop it. Every time we got so many churches, more than corner stores. We got so many churches. I've been Crip Trip taking over. There's so many churches out here, Crip Trip even buying your own church and saying, can we buy your little property? <laughs> Stop it. Lose him. And I'm not bashing on I'm just showing. And I'm not speaking about nobody that I know personally. I'm speaking about what I've been seeing. Now I'm about to get off here because I'm going to start my day. Pray for me. Um, don't forget, meet me in Virginia this weekend. And let me talk about this. First of all, when I've been invited to any church, when I be invited to church, I pray sincerely. And I go on a fast, sincerely. And I say, Lord, is this the right church for me? What do you want me to do? And what do you want me to say? They might want me to come for something else, but I'm coming for souls. And it's a flyer that's on my page that say roast of Andrew Caldwell. Contrary to all the rumors and the speculations that you may have heard in the past about me. First of all, no one won't be roasting me. This is a saving and sanctified. It's a kind of, first of all, it's a second anniversary. The Sunday is the official day. And Saturday is the day for church. I've seen a lot of church that went around that you bring these people in, they laugh. It's about God. So if you're not going to support me and you're not going to come, you might as well go and unfollow me before I unfollow you. But now, I can, ooh, Andrew, I didn't unfollow you. I'm going to block you. That's what it is. But anyway, I'm not begging you for your support because you don't have to support me. But why come on my page and talk all that mess and call people and investigate people like you're the FBI? You're not the FBI. And also, it's going around and saying it's in my mind. It's in my mind. First of all, in my mind, my, it's never my mind is to live safe. That's all I think about in loving people. I have money, I live a good life. And the ones that are saying that I'm not well-known, I don't want to be well If you think I'm not well-known, good. But the money that's come, the coins that I'm getting, I must be well-known. And the second thing is this thing, I don't have celebrity friends. First off, they don't have to tell you who I talk to. I don't have to tell you who I talk to. You don't know who number I have. That's one thing. So please, please, please humble yourself and pray before you speak about me. I'm going to see you guys live right now. I am going to speak the truth and nothing but the truth. Evelyn, I got the sad news about a good friend of mine and um, someone that I look up to, someone that I never slept with. They kept me safe from danger. People were trying to hurt me. And I was not thinking it in my mind. You can send it to your mother. You can send it to the police. Send it to your lawyers. Send it to your officers. 
Send it to your church, your pastor, your first lady. I'm about to cut some rumors.